Hello again, everyone! Welcome back to Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam! Boy, I didn't realize I was, gonna be, I was gonna be talking quite this much. I haven't even gotten over to the right-hand side yet. But, we have got Titan... Xeon and Titan mobile suits, and I changed the uh, background music again. Um, still not gonna be doing, uh... This one, A New World, because that's gonna get me a full block. Uh, I should try some of the others to see what uh, has a full loop, but, uh... I don't know, we'll do that eventually. Anyway, uh, let's jump right into it. Start out with the, uh... The GM-2 RMS-179, an improved version of the GM used by the Federation in the One-Year War. Its performance is largely unchanged. And that, and, and it is the, the standard, uh, um... Red and white of the original GM. The Hyzak RMS-106, a redesigned version of the Xeon Zaku used by the Federation. Its machine gun is also inherited from the Zaku and has limited firepower. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they never made a master grade of this. They made the the uh, um, the the, uh, the Titan's green color scheme, uh, but not this blue one, which is really nice. This uh, uh, the lighter uh, blue and the darker blue. I really like it. You don't really get to see this color scheme used uh, in other things. Although I, I guess kind of the uh, um, captured uh, Xeon suits. Maybe that's why they used blue for all of those, because this has blue in it. I don't know. And this blue version is widely used by the Federation forces. So yeah, this is the standard Fetty version. The Titan version of the Hyzak uses the old Zaku's colors, which is gorgeous, I will say that, but uh, I like the blue for the um, the difference, I guess. Armed with a machine gun and beam saber, it is well suited for close combat. No, it really isn't. Especially with the, uh, the missile launchers on the, um, under the arms. An MS based on the Zaku series. Although the Titans were formed to hunt Xeon remnants, they used the traditional Zaku colors, which is kind of strange. RMS 106 CS, an improved Hyzak for use by special forces. Its powerful beam launcher can be used for close, uh, for long-range bombardment, and it's not quite the. Uh, um, the standard Zaku colors, because it's got a, a lighter green here. Um, although it is a it is a pretty nice uh, contrast. And again, I don't know why they haven't made a master grade of this yet. All they need to do is make some new uh, um, uh, armor pieces. Maybe the original Zaku two master grade. I mean the uh, Hyzak just didn't sell very well. And one of my favorites, the Gobaldi Beta RMS-117. A Xeon mobile suit which was adopted by the Federation after the One-Year War. Its performance is equal to that of most newer mobile suits. Ah, oh, another Nagano design. So good. I want a Master Grade of this so badly. I mean, look at that. Look at that profile. It's great. And it has, uh, the, the beam sabers are in the shoulders here. They pop open and they, it can pull out the beam saber. I want one of these so badly. <laughs> and the Marasai, the newest mobile suit in the Zaku series, made by An Anaheim and then given to the Titans. Its beam rifle is capable of rapid fire. This kind of has uh, um, the uh, char colors to it, although it's more of an orange than uh, the red. Uh, the red and, and magenta. Um, but yeah, it is... Uh, Definitely a, a uh, successor to the Zaku, and a very good one, too. Um, highly recommend if anyone wants a master, I mean, a high-grade kit to just play around with, get this. It's a lot of fun. It's very poseable, uh, very stable, and, uh, and just a, a lot of fun for a, a little uh, a relatively inexpensive kit. And the RMS-154 Barzam, a mass-produced Titans mobile suit introduced toward the end of the conflict. It appears too late for its abilities to make a difference. 
And again, it has the uh, standard uh, um, Titan's colors. I kind of wonder why other suits didn't. Although one of the reasons why this one might have is because it did. Uh, it is uh, based off of the Gundam Mark II. And Gundam Mark II. RX-178, a new Gundam created by the Titans. Its beam rifle is a cartridge type which can be reloaded at any time. Technically, a large number of the other mobile suits have those. Like the Marasai, it can reload it. It even has uh, um, spare cartridges. Um, the uh, the, Z the Hyzax, same thing. They just didn't put that uh, um, capability in in the game. I don't know why. Of course, in the Master Grade kit, the uh, um, the cartridges uh, fit on the back of the uh, the shield, uh, right over where the uh, viewport is. And for the um, the bazooka, it carries them on uh, the waist there. So it's still fairly limited in how much it can carry. Oh shoot! Didn't read that one. Get back. Its bazooka is an unusual cartridge type which can be reloaded reloaded at any time. Yeah. Unusual. <laughs> Covers most of the mobile suits, really. A high mobility tight uh the RX-17 160 Bylant. A high mobility Titan mobile suit. Its mobility is equal to that of a transformable mobile suit, and it's capable of atmospheric flight. It's a pretty nice design. Um I mean the col the color scheme. Uh, kind of the the similar to the um, Federation uh, Hyzax, uh, a little bit paler blue, uh, but I do like that red one so much more. Can't see the eye as well in this one. It's easier to see in the uh, the red one, I think. Um, although the 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 main camera up above it really covers it. Uh, and I do like that it has a V-fin on it. Uh, but uh, the um, the codes, like RX, uh, that means that it was developed by the uh, um, the Federation itself. Whereas the various other, um, there are like ORX and PRX and stuff like that that uh, um, mean a different organization within the Federation designed it. Which we should probably see one up next. No, RX one, well... Hmm. RX-110, this is actually uh, designed by uh, Shiraco. Well, I guess made with Shiraco's help, maybe that's why. Uh, the RX-110 Gabflay, a transformable Titan mobile suit. Made with Shiraco's help, it has great firepower and high mobility despite its small size. Oops, wrong button. Um. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and transform it. Um... Again, has a fairly unique color scheme, the uh, the brown and uh, kind of a greenish color. Not a big fan of the brown, but um, it, it kind of works. It does kind of work. Alright, maybe the next one will have a different code. Yeah, NRX uh, 044 Ashamar. I don't remember what they all mean. Um... But it means that it was developed by a uh, different uh, group within the uh, Federation, rather than the main Federation uh, group itself. A transformable mobile suit developed by the Federation forces. It has high mobility and is equipped with a powerful, large beam rifle. I kind of like this one better. The, the green and yellow, um, I think, really go together well. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of green. Um, but again, like I said in the, uh, the previous uh, uh, episode, uh, the all-white does give it kind of a sporty look. I mean, uh, refined look is what I'm uh, just going for. Um, of course, it, its critical weak point is when the uh, chest armor is open there. Uh, I've got the uh, high grade of this, which is pretty nice, but again, like everything else, I want a master grade. <laughs> be so good. It'd be big, though. And the Masala, PMX-000. 
000. That is uh, P for Paptimus Shirako, a transformable mobile suit developed at Jupiter by Shirako. The mega particle cannons on its back are well suited for long range attacks. Eh, I guess so. Uh, this one also kind of has a unique color scheme, the uh, the blue and purple. Um, I like the white and green a bit better, though. And here we get to one of my favorites, the ORX-005, a transformable mo uh, Geplant, a transformable mobile suit for cyber new types developed by the Augusta New Type Lab. It is used by ace pilots due to its high mobility. Yeah, it's not just... Uh, um, uh, new types who can use it. Uh, was used by uh, Yazan. Uh, and I really like this this color scheme. The the blue and teal. That's a that's a really nice combination. Um, it has a it actually has a booster that can attach to it uh, for long range flight. I think I said in a in a much earlier episode that it has a booster for um, uh, to get it into orbit. But no, it's just a booster for long-range flight. Uh, basically serves the same function as uh, the, the various sub-flight systems like the, the Dodai and, and, its, and its successors for other mobile suits. And the Hambrabi in uh, goof colors, uh, which is one of the reasons why it was used by uh, uh, Ramba Rall, I guess. RX-139. Uh... A mobile suit with simple transformation mechanisms. Compact and powerful like the Gabplay, it's designed for close combat. Um, where is the gun on this one? It doesn't actually show it out. Hmm. Interesting. But I would also like to get a uh, Master Grade of this. Not as much as... Uh, I like a master grade of, of many of the other suits, but uh, this one would be pretty nice. Its sea serpent is an electrical weapon that entangles and immobilizes enemies. That's the other reason why uh, uh, Rambaral used it. And the MRX-009, Psycho Gundam, an enormous new type machine developed by the Murasame Lab. It was developed in parallel with the cyber new types. And it is black. Which, you'd think that it... I mean, it was developed before the uh, Murasame Labs were taken over by the Titans, so you kind of wonder why it was black. I suppose they might have painted it very quickly, but... Uh, yeah, the transformation of this seems overly complex, but... Uh, eh, who am I to judge? <laughs> and the very purple... MRX-010, uh, Psycho Gundam Mark II, an improved version of the Psycho Gundam. Its armament is enhanced for space combat, but it is destroyed before it can produce results. I guess. I mean, it was actually uh, destroyed before it could use the, uh, uh, before the uh, remote bits could come out, I suppose. Does have a better transformation uh, than the uh, original Psycho Gundam, though. NRX 055 Bound Dock, a transformable mobile suit for cyber new types introduced at the end of the conflict. This prototype unit is colored gray, and it's basically the exact same as uh, um, the other one. This is the uh, Gates Kappa colors. And the NRX. 055 Bound Dock, a transformable mobile suit for cyber new types. Introduced at the end of the conflict, it has both powerful ranged weapons and high melee ability. And this is the uh, Rosamia colors. Uh, although, again, in one of the previous episodes, I mentioned that uh, um, uh, Jared had a different colored suit, but that's actually only in the design uh, materials. When they actually animated it, uh, he did, in fact, pilot this exact same version, the same color scheme. Um, the, uh, version that is listed as his colors, um, basically swaps the, uh, the yellow and the red, uh, for the most part. And the PMX-002, 
Bolonoic Saman. A mobile suit independently created by Shirako. It has electronic warfare capabilities and can collect data on enemies. Uh, I don't know, they didn't, I don't remember them talking about that much during the show, but uh, I might have missed that, and it could definitely be in some of the design uh, materials. But it's kind of a uh, standard Zaku colors here, the, the uh, light green and dark green. And the PMX-001. I kind of wonder why they swapped the orders of this. A heavy mobile suit created by Shirako, the Palace Athene. Its shoulders house scattering beam cannons for wide area attacks, which kind of suck. In addition to its defensive functions, its shield can also launch missiles. Eh, rather useful. As I found. <laughs> and the large missiles on its back binders are slow moving, but very powerful. It's kind of a light green and yellow look. Doesn't really match many other, or really anything else. Um, but uh, I do I, I do th like this color scheme better than the uh, Ayug one. Um, I don't know. The other one just seemed kind of bland. And the O, PMX-003, the final heavy mobile suit created by Shirako. It is equipped with two extra arms which can use beam sabers, giving it superb melee capabilities. That is very true. Uh, its beam sabers are housed there in the uh, uh, side armor. It has four of them, two there and two there. Um, I do really like the all yellow look to this. Um, uh, it's one of the suits that can really pull off a primarily all single color look, I think. I'd say that Methus is actually another one. Uh, the Nemo. Game custom colors, an advanced version of the GM series. Its abilities are well balanced, and it makes an ideal support unit. Um, this really isn't Titan's colors, although, it sh I mean, it really should. Like, the, the white should, I think, be, be, be dark blue or almost black. Uh, I, I don't know why it's just blue. Um, I think it would look a lot better if it was black there. Um, and actually make it Titan's colors. Uh, but the blue is nice, and it does kind of work for it, but yeah, I would have gone with uh, full-blown full, full blown, um, Titan's colors for it. And the Rick Diaz game custom colors. A Rick Diaz armed with beam pistols. Its weapons recharge automatically and do not need to be reloaded. Uh, yeah, but this is the version that uh, can't swap them. And this is an unusual suit in that I don't know what co what to call this color scheme. You know, it's got this magenta and, and this pale, I don't know, kind of eggshell color. Uh, it doesn't really match anything else. I don't really know what the design idea behind this color scheme was. I actually kind of like it. I mean, they ki it it's unusual in that it, it you know, that it's unique. Um... But I'm kind of wondering where they got the idea for these two colors to go together. And its backup we weapon is a Vulcan Phalanx, which provides more freedom of movement. What? That makes no sense. That makes no sense at all. And the game custom colors Rick Diaz. Uh, Rick Diaz armed with beam pistols. Its weapons must be reloaded by swapping it for the spare on the mobile suit's back, which is really useful. And this I would say, uh, I would call uh, roughly um, uh, the standard Gelgoog color scheme of uh, gray and uh, kind of gray green. Um, and it really works for this. Uh, although I'm, kind of, well, I was about to say I'm kind of surprised that they didn't go with the Dom color scheme, but. They sort of did for the standard uh, Rick Diaz, um, without the purple. But yeah, I, I'm like I, I am kind of con confused why they didn't go with a Dom color scheme. I think that would have looked pretty good actually. And an, a mobile suit developed by Anaheim based on Xeon Designs. Yeah, uh, Char brought this uh, design with him. I think either that or he brought the technology with him, and uh, Anaheim built off of that and designed this. Although it's a mass production type, its performance is very high. 
and the Methus. And this is this is beautiful. Um, again, it's it's not quite Titan's colors because uh, I would say that white. Well, all of the white would need to be black. Uh, although they do have black up there, which uh, does work pretty well. Uh, game Custom Colors Methus, a transformable mobile suit made by Anaheim. This inexpensive transformable type is armed with beam guns capable of rapid fire. And it does look really spiffy in this, this color scheme. I think this one really works well for it. Um, I would say I actually like this a bit be more than the, the standard yellow. Ordinarily, I'm not a big fan of yellow, but I think the, the Methus can pull it off. Uh, the game Custom Colors DJ, ground combat mobile suit inspired by Xeon Designs. Its appearance and its beam Naginata resemble those of the Gelgoog. Yep, this is the Gelgoog color scheme. I do like it. I think it looks really good in this color scheme. Although I do like the, uh, the standard one as well. But this works really well for uh, a, um, a Xeon unit. And its close combat abilities are high, and it can use its Naginata for special attacks. I guess most of the units can use their beam weapons for special attacks, but okay. And Super Gundam, game custom colors, a, Mark, a Gundam Mark II with extra equipment. It has mobility and firepower equal to a transformable mobile suit. And this is beautiful. The uh, uh, Titans Mark II with the Titans G Defensor, that's a nice design. I like this color scheme. And the game custom colors, Shakushiki, prototype mo general purpose mobile suit. It cannot transform, but it has high mobility and excels in close combat. And again, we've got the Shar custom color scheme. This is gorgeous too. It's not quite as spiffy as the uh, the bright gold, but uh, I mean, you've got the the. Uh, Kind of the, the pinkish red and the dark red going together. Although you've got two different dark reds on here. This is this dark red on the backpack is a bit more of uh, uh, the standard uh, Char uh, custom colors. But this is a really nice to, uh, choice for the color schemes. And Hakushiki armed with a clay bazooka. It's, bazooka can fire scattering shells that attack enemies over a wide area. Yeah, but it kind of sucks. Well, let's let's be honest. It kind of sucks. And game custom colors Zeta Gundam, a high performance transformable mobile suit. Its shield has high defensive strength, but the mobile suit cannot transform if the shield is destroyed. I don't think I've ever had the shield be destroyed before. Um, I would be really impressed to see that happen, actually. Um, but again, another Titan's color scheme. Absolutely beautiful. I think the, the Zeta Gundam has one of my favorite head designs. Um, uh, close second would be uh, the S Gundam. Um, well, I shouldn't say that it's close second. I'd have to really think about it a lot more to, to say that this is my favorite head design. Um, but I, it, it's, it's definitely high up there, uh, as is uh, the S Gundam from uh, Sentinels, uh, or Gundam Sentinel. Um, you know, where all the uh, Zeta Pluses and the Faz are from. The, uh, the S Gundam is a really nice design. All the, although the boosted up design, the excess, is excessive. The heavy attack version of the Zeta. Its forearm grenade launchers serve as backup weapons. And I would, I would actually use this version a lot more with the, uh, the standard beam rifle if instead of the Vulcans it had the, uh, um, uh, the grenade launchers. Much prefer the grenades to the Vulcans. Actually, you know what? We haven't tra we didn't transform this. Let's do that. Yeah, look at that. That's gorgeous. Of course, we did see a lot of this in all the arcade mode. Cause that's what I basically use. Nothing but. But uh, eh. it's nice to be able to see it up close, isn't it? I would I would rebuy the the Zeta Gundam if they came out in the, this color scheme. And the GMG Game Custom Colors, an early model of mass-produced ground combat mobile suits. 
Its beam rifle is an early version and is not very powerful. Uh, this isn't quite the Zaku color scheme because it's it's this gray and and the green. Um, so I guess it's kind of like the uh, um, what they did with the Zaku designs of just uh, two colors, but um, I mean it's kind of close. Uh, it's just a bit, you know. I, I'm a big fan of green, but it's a bit much. It's a bit much. Should have had more gray, you know. Like if they did the exact same um, two tone of the original uh, GMG, like. If the legs and the, the waist armor were all um, beige. And, and actually, well, I guess what I'd say is that uh, flip the two colors. You know, have the uh, the green be the torso and the gray be the legs and stuff. That would work pretty well. Of course, then it might kind of look like the, uh, um, uh, the AU GM2. Uh, it's low. Its machine gun has low power, but good rapid fire features, and can be easily reloaded. This is a bit more what I'm talking about. Um, this is a bit uh, more reasonable with the uh, the the gray and the green. Uh, I do rather like this design, this this uh, color scheme. Um, interestingly enough, the gun is the same color. It's, it's white rather than gray. A ground combat mobile suit with a beam rifle. With high, higher output than the GMG, it has greater attack capabilities. Its weaponry is the same as the GMG. Oh, a ground combat mobile suit with a machine gun. Its weaponry is the same as the GMG, but tuned for higher offensive power. I do like that the, uh, the V-Fin is also gray. A ground combat mobile suit with an explosive projectile launcher. It's a, a... You could just say bazooka. Its shells explode on impact, creating heavy blast damage. A ground combat mobile suit with a long-range shell-firing cannon. With its long range and high velocity, its cannon is ideal for bombardment. And again, you can see that the uh, the missile launcher is the same is the standard white. Ground combat mobile suit armed with a missile launcher. Its missiles can be rapid fired and are highly accurate. Well, they aren't highly accurate. They're a bit too slow to be highly accurate. Again, this is a uh, um, you know the two tone here with the uh, the gray and the green. Um, not overwhelming green uh, is pretty nice in my opinion. General Purpose Mobile Suit with uh, the Game Custom Colors GM. General Purpose Mobile Suit with Beam Weapons. It costs little to use and has a good balance of abilities. Although I think I would have made the uh, uh, backpack gray. Game Custom Colors Gun Tank. An early model of a mobile suit meant for long-range support. In addition to its cannons, it also has Bob Missiles for close-range combat. Bob Missiles? I wonder if that's a mistranslation. I don't remember it being called that. This is, again, another case of too much green, though. I, I like green, but this is too much green. <laughs> Needs a bit more uh, other colors. A bit more, more variation. And again, a bit too much green on the gun cannon. Game Custom Colors, a medium-range support mobile suit designed for high firepower. It is ideal for mid-range bombardment, but has no melee weapons. Although it could kick pretty well. I think we've seen that in action. Ugh. And again, this is this is really nice, the, uh, the colors. Um, just enough gray and green. And it's almost like the, uh, the gray one that uh, they made a Master Grade kit of. Game custom. Co I don't think that was that wasn't technically the G3 because the G3 is kind of gray and purple. Eh. High performance prototype mobile suit. Its weight is lower after its shield is destroyed, enabling it to make special melee attacks. Really? I don't know if I ever tried that. I should try that sometime. High performance prototype mobile suit with heavy firepower. Uh, game custom colors Gundam, of course. Should say that. Uh, the Hyper Bazooka's shells move slowly, but have very high destructive power. 
a high-performance prototype mobile suit with a special close combat weapon. Its hammer can be swung to, a to block enemy attacks, uh, which is very useful. A high-performance prototype mobile suit armed with a space hammer. Its crude weapon uses its mass and momentum to damage the enemy. And, and it has verniers. I like that the, the hyper hammer has uh, um, sharper spikes. You know, longer, sharper spikes than uh, the standard Gundam hammer. That, that kind of amuses me. <laughs> I, I don't know why that's, that's the case, but it, it's a little bit weird. And the MS-05. I think this is a little bit too much blue. I don't... It, it, it's... it's Or... It's not that it has too much blue, but it's too blue. Should be more muted, darker blue, I think, for the Zaku one. MS-05. A Xeon mobile suit which was f the first ever used in combat. After proving itself in battle, it went on to become the ancestor of all mobile suits. A bazooka-equipped version of the first mobile suit used in combat. Thanks to its hands, this machine provided ca proved capable of easily switching weapons and, and tossing cracker grenades. MS-06. Actually, on this, uh, the dark green of the torso uh, doesn't quite come off. Uh, well, got some slowdown there. Compared to the uh, the green of the arms. Uh, the, the, the dark green should be a little bit darker. The MS-06 Zaku-2, the main Xeon mobile suit of the One Year War. Its great success in the early stages of the conflict changed the face of warfare forever. I do like how they put in, like, the, uh, um, uh, kind of scorch marks on the back uh, of a lot of these mobile suits. Um... It does give it kind of a, a used feel to a lot of these, uh, where, you know, just being plain, solid colors might have uh, uh, felt too new, too fresh. The main Xeon mobile suit of the One Year War. Its bazooka gives it increased firepower, making it a threat even to warships. A Zaku-2 armed with a special long-range attack weapon. Its cannon is an improved weapon created by soldiers on the front lines. And a Zaku-2 with an extra backup weapon. Because its missile pods are mounted on its legs, the mobile suit must face its target while firing. That's kind of annoying, really. MS-06S Zaku-2 Shar Custom. The red Zaku-2 used by Shar Asnable. Whoops. This ace unit is said to be three times faster than a normal Zaku, and is dreaded by the Federation. Which, of course, created a whole meme in Japan that anything is, that's red is three times faster. You know, a red pen writes three times faster kind of thing. Uh, mostly as a joke, of course. Although I believe one car company made a red uh, uh, Char Custom uh, sports car as a tie-in. Shar Asnable's Red Zaku-2, armed with a bazooka. With high mobility and firepower, it has great fighting ability. And MS-07, Goof. Again, the dark blue doesn't come off quite as much against the lighter blue. A ground combat mobile suit used by Ramba Rall. Intended for anti-mobile suit combat, it's armed with an electrified heat rod and a powerful heat sword. I don't know that I'd call it a heat rod, it should be more like a heat whip. But whatever. It's a little bit too flexible for a heat rod. MS-15 GAN. Should actually be YMS-15, because this was still pro uh, in the prototype stage, which is uh, usually indicated in uh, Xeon um, designs by, w by a Y in front. A close combat mobile suit used by Makuve. Like the Gelgoog, which was developed at the same time, it has a beam saver. <laughs> what?! It, it's... That's the whole point of the mobile suit! Is that it has a beam saber! <laughs> uh, talk about its high-powered beam saber. But yeah, like, I would have liked to have seen a Rick Diaz with this uh, purple and black look. That would have been nice. MS-09 Dom, a Xeon Heavy mobile suit used by the Black Tri-Stars. Its ground mobility is extremely high due to its hovering abilities. And of course, uh, this was uh, the color scheme of this was taken from the um, Black Tristar's uh, custom Zaku 2 design uh, schemes. 
and that became the standard. Kind of like how um, Char's Red Rictius became the standard for Rictiuses. MS-09R, Rictom, a remodeled DOM for space combat. Its hover propulsion systems have been adapted for space, giving it excellent mobility. And it has that stupid single beam, right, beam cannon in its torso that's very short range and low power. MSM-10, Zok. A, an amphibious heavy mobile suit designed for high firepower. The Mega Particle Cannon on its head allows it to attack enemies above it, or in front of it if it's uh, in cruising mode. It is a rather silly design. I'd still buy a Master Grid. MS-07, MSM-07, Zagok, a mass-produced amphibious mobile suit. This well-balanced machine has a great cost-performance ratio. This is definitely one of my favorite suits to use, and it's just an all-around generally nice-looking uh, suit, actually. MSM-07S, Zagok Char Custom, a Zagok painted in Char Asimov's red personal colors. It participates in Zeon's invasion of the Jaburo base. Actually, I think by dint of it having the S on it, I believe it is also uh, higher performance. MSM-04, Akai, one of several types of amphibious mobile suits, and the cutest. Designed for ease of production rather than performance, it has relatively low combat ability. Actually, I think the point was that uh, um, it, it's so thick that uh, it really shields its generator well, so it show it doesn't really show up on uh, like heat sensing uh, um, detection systems. An amphibious uh, MSM-03, GOG. An amphibious mobile suit. Its scattering megaparticle cannons have a limited range, but can attack over a wide area. MS-14, Gelgoog. A high-performance, mass-produced mobile suit created to replace the Zaku. This well-balanced mobile suit is a masterpiece of Xeon technology. Indeed it is. Gelgoog Shar Custom, MS-14S. Also, um, this specific version is the YMS-14. Uh, Shar took it out as a uh, test unit. The personal Gelgoog of Shar Asnable, especially tuned like the other custom units, it's one of the most powerful mobile suits of the One Year War. Ziong, in uh, what really amounts to the... Uh, um, the Gyan color scheme, uh, you know, if you think about it. MSN-02, Xeon's final mobile suit used by Char Asnable during the Battle of Abawaku. It is still only 80% complete when it enters combat. Of course, what's missing is the legs, and it doesn't really need them. Although, perfect Xeong is awesome. Gaza C, AMX-003, a mass-produced transforming mobile suit developed at Axis. It uses a simple and inexpensive design due to resource limitations. And, uh, again, uh, has a unique color scheme, the, uh, the, the, uh, kind of magenta and pink, um, in the Zeta movies they gave a white custom, uh, colored one to, uh, I guess white and purple, uh, to, uh, Haman, which is actually kind of nice. But still, I would love to get a Master Grade of this. I said it before, I'll say it again, give me a Master Grade. Screw it, give me a master grade of everything. <laughs> Kubali AMX-004. A mobile suit de design, uh, developed for use by Axis leader Haman Karn. It's equipped with funnels, improved versions of the bits used by the Elmeth. Oh, I love this suit. So good. And Kubli Mark II, AMX-004. It should be a, a 2 at the end. A Neo Zeon mobile suit of the same type as Haman Karn's machine. As a new type mobile suit, it is able to perform all range attacks. Oh, this red and yellow scheme on it, though, is just beautiful. It's, it's so shiny and spiffy. I like it. And the, uh, the beam saber with the, uh, the two prongs at the side. <laughs> I love that one, too. And finally, the game custom colors of the Double Zeta Gundam. The very newest high-performance mobile suit, designed for maximum firepower regardless of cost, it has very high combat ability. And in the 
Titan's colors. Now well, that kind of looks spiffy. I think this looks a bit better in the, the Titan's colors. I mean, I actually like the uh, um, Mark II and the Zeta Gundam in the standard colors better. Um, but this one... Uh, it, it, it turns what is kind of a cheesy suit into a non-cheesy suit. I would have liked the uh, um, Double Zeta Gundam much better if it you, if it had the Faz rather than uh, um, standard Double Zeta. And the game custom colors of the very newest high-performance mobile suit. The Double Cannons on its back can also be used as large beam sabers. Indeed. And that is the end of the uh, Titans and Xeon mobile suits. When we come back, um, we will look at uh, the rest of this stuff. Uh, the characters will probably take a while, but I'll probably try and do everything all at once because uh, um, we're getting... Well, no, I'll probably just do the, the characters. Uh, then uh, we'll have another episode of looking at the BGM's illustrations and uh, sample launch videos, which are kind of fun. See you next time, everyone!